Recently in the news, we have had the story of a drone pilot who had his drone shot down by a homeowner here in the UK. This video is not about that part of the issue. You can see a video linked in the description below covering this serious aspect of the story. Instead, today, I want to look at the drone flight, which happened within an FRZ of a nearby aerodrome. The drone pilot is currently required to have an operator ID. So this is the drone registration number that you would place on your drone and therefore take legal responsibility for the drone, etc. However, at present, you are not expected to take the flyer ID test and gain a number for a drone under 250 grams with a camera, so a drone like the Mini 3 here. In response to this story, we have seen a lot of comments and opinions focused on this fact and pointing out that if the drone pilot had a flyer ID, that he would have known not to trust the flight restrictions on his DJI aircraft as being accurate and therefore base his flight on an official source of the information. However, the drone code is a publication from the UK CAA, the airspace regulator responsible for drone use. This drone code is described by them as a combination of law, regulation and best practice, really the info you need to pass the flyer ID test and start flying safely. Before we get too far into this story, let me know in the comments how you, as drone flyers, as a drone pilot, check for airspace restrictions. Do you just use the DJI app or check Drone Assist or another mapping service? Do you check the official maps and sources too? I'd really be interested to know how everybody plans their flights. Whilst researching the main story of where the drone pilot had their Mini 2 shot down whilst flying an FRZ, I discovered an issue which could, in my opinion, lead you to feel that one of the most important parts of the drone code, so flying drones near aircraft, I think we all agree that that is uh, one of the most important parts of it, but that is broken. In the news report that I mentioned previously regarding the Chapa Hadley's drone shot down, the AAIB report noted the following. He, they're referring to the drone pilot here, was not aware that he was flying in a flight restricted zone of a nearby airfield because the UA manufacturer's app did not show it and he had not checked an official source. So again, whilst researching our other video, I popped across to the Drone Code website run by the UK CAA and took a look at point seven, which covers FRZs. The point states, I'm reading it here, stay well away from airports, airfields, spaceports, and aircraft. Big exclamation point there. If you endanger the safety of air an aircraft, you could go to prison for five years. Most airports and spaceports have a flight restriction zone. Never fly in this zone unless you have permission from the airport. Checking for airport, airfield and spaceport, um, spaceport restrictions. You can find details of FRZs and other space restrictions in the NATS map of airspace restrictions that opens in a new tab and it's really the official resource for that kind of thing. And it then says some drone apps also give details of flight restriction zones. Interesting. So although the AAIB report is correct in asserting that the drone pilot did not check official sources for restrictions, something which is certainly a legal requirement, even if the pilot has passed their flyer ID test, based on the information laid out by the CAA in the drone code, as I've just read it, he would have been told that some drone apps also give details of flight restriction zones. There are no mentions to check against the official sources before flight or any warnings of potential inaccuracies. So surely an average reader would take from the text that if the drone lets them fly, they're fine. Nowhere in the guidance does it suggest that the drone app might actually be wrong. Perhaps this isn't a widely known thing. Maybe people don't know about this. Well, it is well known enough that it's been the topic of videos on this channel, including one with West Midlands Police of Sky Coppers fame, where they express their first concern that drone pilots should not be relying on drone manufacturer apps to tell them if the airspace is clear for a number of reasons. So it would appear that within the enforcement and wider drone world, this was known as an issue. So why would the CAA place that guidance in the drone code? There is no suggestion that you must only check official sources for the information. The inclusion of the manufacturer app in the drone code as a possible point of verification kind of pulls down the argument that being required to hold a flyer ID could have changed the situation in this particular story 
mentioned before. Point A to the drone code does give a lot more detail in terms of where you can get reliable information. Although, again, despite police forces and others warning the public in terms of the reliability of manufacturer flight restrictions, they again mention that. It states you must understand what that information is giving you, but nothing in terms of warning that only official sources should be used to plan a drone flight. Now, we don't have any information in terms of the police investigation in this story, so we do not know if the pilot was even registered at all, or if, as with many UK drone flyers, the drone pilot took the flyer ID test as well, even though not required. The fact that the drone code produced by the CAA to help pilots pass the flyer ID test and fly safely is giving out such loose information is a huge concern to me. Looking through the rest of the code, and there are other points I would argue in terms of inclusion and wording, but this isn't supposed to be the definitive guide to legislation. There is a lot of advice, etc., in there as well. However, I would certainly expect that guidance to be correct. Manufacturer apps should not be relied upon at all to base your drone flight on, and in my opinion, this information should not be included in the UK drone code. The story of this drone pilot's defence to flying in an FRZ shows exactly why that might be a problem. It breaks down the very core reasons the drone code exists. The fact is that a recreational pilot could happily read the drone code and take from it that as long as the drone's built-in geofencing, so something like DJI for instance, allowed them to take off, then all is well. The AAIB report clearly shows that this is not the best practice, as in this circumstance, it would appear the app failed to find the correct border for the flight restriction. We have reached out to the CUK CAA for comment on this point, and I will let you know of any responses we get. To ensure that you hear that, if you're new here, hit that subscribe button, and for everyone else, hit the like button. It is free, and it really helps the channel. Sean out.